Welcome back to the treehouse, everyone. We're gonna give it a dangle today. We're, we got a catch and cook planned, and we're going after summer crappies. I've got a technique that I wanna deploy. Uh, you guys have seen the fish cakes on this channel, uh, and if you haven't kept up with all the catch and cooks here, you can watch the series of them, and we'll see if it's the fish that makes the difference or the technique that makes the difference. Let's go check up on the chickens. It's been a while since you guys have seen the chicks. Got some uh, treats, little veggies. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah, they're excited. Did you guys get after it? Oh yeah. So this was Mama, Mama Hen right here. She is no longer Mama Hen. Literally yesterday, she said, nope, I've had enough. They are on their own. They're their own little group now. And everybody is uh, sleeping on the roost. So they were sleeping in the house. Uh, now they're sleeping on the roost and they have integrated into the flock successfully. We've had some pecking, had a couple of, uh, you know, a couple of little injuries, but nothing major. Pretty much fully feathered. I'm just waiting to see some of those little rooster characteristics. A lot of times the hens, the hen pullets, they'll have nice uniform tails. Their feathers will be a little straighter. Their combs are not as pronounced, but this guy back here, rooster, short little squatty tail, feathers, a little disheveled. That one right there I think is a hen. Uh, that one I'm not sure of. This one I'm not sure of. Got a pretty, pretty tall little comb working right there. Colonel Sanders, he's being very patient. Been a good rooster to the, the young flock so far. So as soon as these uh, little roosters start developing, they start fighting, I'm sure he will uh, throw down. Okay. Enjoy, boys and girls. Have fun, be good. I will be back with the crappies. Today is one of those days where you kind of want to get your fishing in before two or three o'clock. Well, the pleasure boaters really come out. It's 11 right now. So we'll see if we can get it done. Gonna unwrap some poles from Canada. Let's see if everything's still connected here. We got a grub on right now. Probably gonna change that. All right, we may have to make an emergency trip back to the truck since that is my only dangle dart at this second. Tell me, I have an emergency dangle bag in here. Here, Jace. Hmm. Oh, I bam! Absolute dead sticking. That bumping bug. He'll measure. He will measure. Pretty sure. Uh, oh, yeah. One crappie in the box. Woo! Gotta make this bumping bug last, y'all. Crappie number dose. Barely hooked. Don't know if he's gonna qualify. I don't know if he's cake qualified. He's 10 inches, he qualifies. Oh yeah, definitely, it's 11. You are crappie cake qualified, sir. You are going in. And I just saw a white bass school come into view as well. All right, a few more. Come on, eat that. Goodness, it's a good one. It's almost like you just have to let it sit there and let the waves just kind of lightly bounce it. There's a white bass school coming up. Right in those crappie though. They're sitting in the very deepest spot of the pile. Golly, they're just putting their little lips on it. 
Not really eating it. Number three, boys, let's go. Barely in the nose. Barely felt him eat it. Hook <laughs> just fell out. Croppy mouth. All right, let's put him in here. GoPro just died. That is a good one. We're scratching it out with one bait. Now, if you're gonna dead stick crappie baits, there's two that I recommend that we make, and that is the dangle dart and this one, the bump and bug. I would really prefer the dangle dart in this situation. When they are just glued, you gotta get right over top of them. They're not doing the swing. You know, when I first started out today, I was like 15 feet away and I was swinging it through and I had a couple chase it, but then they go back to the pile. They're just in that summer doldrum. So having something like this with no moving appendages or barely moving, you know, this bandito bug, just the tails kind of split and go up and down, but it's not a, it's not like a curly tail. It's not a paddle tail. It's not moving a lot of water. That's what they want this time of year. So the dangle dart does nothing. And that's really the best, I would say, for deep summer, hot summer crappies. But eighth ounce head and that little bump and bug just in the electric chicken. That's the only one I have. And I picked it up off the floor of the boat. So if you're just catching crappie, you should get, you should get a lot of mileage out of all the baits that you use. You can catch a lot on just one individual bait. When you get into like the bluegill, and white bass and largemouth that have teeth, that's when you'll start tearing up baits. But crappie, you can go a long ways. Tried the hair jig, tried dead sticking it a little bit. They'd come up to it, but they wouldn't eat it. They really just want that plastic. It's, it's the deal. Unfortunately, when I was packing for Canada, I just left. I took a bunch of crappie baits and then I just, I left them, left them in the garage. Not good. So. All right, let's try to dead stick a few more and see if we can uh, pull them up. There's really nothing to this technique though. There we go, gosh. Gave him a little pop. A little pop and he took it. Oh. Summertime stagnant crappies. Not as fun as the direct post spawn crappies, but they taste just as good. I think we got enough for our catch and cook, but that last thump, it's addicting. That was the first one that really thumped it hard. I like that. Try to get a couple more bumps. More drop, and I think it's just time to move. These are mega stagnants. Still catchable. Man, they are tough. There's a good one just nosed on it. God, popped it. They are barely getting it. Kind of weird you hit it on the way way up like kind of a reaction that should get us where we want to be for our catch and cook tonight all right a little white bass wrangle to finish this thing off Get a couple of extras. Extras for the pot. There we go. Let's see what we're dealing with. That one will measure. We'll measure, but we will try to get a bigger one. Oh my gosh, they're down there. 
They are down there. These fish are just right on the edge of a hump. They are coming into my, my strike zone as we speak. Big wad coming in. Incoming. Hooked up. Feels a little better. Oh yeah, there's our keeper. Bringing home the bacon now. We delivered. We delivered on crappie, went above and beyond with some extra white bass. I still cannot find my crappie baits. I'm gonna feel really dumb if they're in the boat right now. Ugh, by the way, so steamy. Gotta have some boat shorts this time of year, guys. So if you haven't seen our boat shorts, googansquad.com, check them out. It's like wearing, it's like wearing undies out there. Super comfy in the heat. You can use my promo code and get 10% off. Are you kidding me? They're right in front of me the whole time. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. This kind of got, this confused me. This fell off. Sort of hide it. They were literally right here the entire time. Okay. Also, just want to give a big thank you to everyone that has gotten the crappie baits. I really feel like we have some amazing crappie baits and uh, working on more stuff right now. But bump and bug, two inch bump and bug, that's, that was the big player today. It's all I had. If I would have had dangle darts, I think that would have been even better. But bump and bug, dangle dart this time of year, got to have it. Got to have it. So. Appreciate you guys' support on, on the crappie stuff. Uh, we've we've actually sold through a ton, uh, more more than I thought we would. So I know crappie fishing is getting popular, and it's it's so fun. I enjoy it. They're tasty, obviously. But if you want some really high quality crappie baits, you know where to go. You know what time it is? Ah, uh, y'all love catching them, but hanging around the house, cleaning them, I love doing that too. Eating them, of course, is going to be even better. We're going to head up to the kitchen with OSG here in a minute, and we're going to get started on the process of chunking these up instead of doing kind of the blend. We've been doing a blend, like using a food processor, so we're going to use a different strategy today. So if you guys don't have a full-blown cleaning station, which I strive to have one day in the future, uh, this is what I use. It's a food-grade cutting board. I got it off Amazon. I got it really for processing deer because it takes up a lot of space but it works great for fish too and I got these little uh, these little buckets right here I live close to the lake so I always dump my uh, my disregards back into the lake let the catfish eat them and stuff and just continue the life process and I want to try that that little zipper trick that I learned up the north of walleye sort of get that bloodline out. Let's just try that real quick. Just gonna go from the tail end. Just try this. We're chunking these up anyways, so we'll take that little piece, chunk it in. Zips that little red spot right out of there. Ooh, I like that trick. Okay, that's a good one. Well, bam there you go so the next step in this process is to cube these up so what i'm doing right now is i'm just slicing these kind of in thirds just depending on the fish and then i'm cubing it this is different than the other method i use with the food processor literally making it dice size so just depending on the fish cutting into thirds or seconds and then slicing from there and making those dice size little bits and that is what is going to go into our fish cakes in the kitchen, OSG. 
<laughs> there we go. And Ben. And Ben. It's my little cameraman right here. Oh, gentlemen. <laughs> oh, trying to get daddy's cold beer, I see. Uh uh. Not yet. <laughs> Say hi. Say hi. Hi. Yeah. Nope. Not yet. All right, so OSG has, has crushed up. Is that Ritz crackers? No, this is a different cracker. So, y'all, I can't have gluten. <laughs> so we're going to do it my way. Gluten-free. And, and then we'll do it your way. But I don't know if you want to use it like the bag method. It's really easy. You don't have to bring oh, out I like a, it. I like a machine it and clean really it. It works really good. Uh, just get a bag, roll it, crush it. So this is like a rosemary salt, sea salt cracker. We've got Ritz over here. We'll do the same thing. Down to two different batches. So we've done like basically the puree method. We've Which, gone overboard. Yeah. With <laughs> we've a, done paste yeah, method. Yeah, paste. So I've hand chopped these. Uh -huh. Dice size, basically. There's a couple that are, you know, maybe bigger than dice, but... Well, that's uh, bigger than crab meat, but I'll try it. I'll give it a go. See. Okay, okay. Well, you know, we can perfect it. <laughs> There's a couple that probably need to be cut, like, one more time, possibly. But look at that delicious crappie meat right there. And I also uh, zippered out the uh, most of the red stuff in there, okay. which uh, usually has, like little bit of rib bones as well like just remnants of rib bones using the electric fillet knife so most of this is going to be just delectable pure pure meat we haven't used the air fryer in a while i thought maybe just try it with some avocado oil you know it uses a lot less oil i i'm starting to like i'm starting to think that some of these vegetable oils and condensed seed oils may not be the best they're not good for you they're not You're good right. for you okay yeah <laughs> so you know as much as i hate that because of the gold crispies are so amazing mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to find ways to uh you know not not get the old cancer all right here's how we do this osg she is going to shallow pan fry hers in the gluten-free uh crumblings mm -hmm. I'm gonna use that classic Brits, and I might do like a butter avocado oil mixture on mine, and I'm gonna pop it in the air fryer. So we're gonna see which method is better. This is good, experimentation. You guys can be the come judge. along and <laughs> be the judge, figure this out. So there goes the Ritz, smashing them up, rolling them. Yeah, we'll say the Ritz crushes a whole lot easier. And in here, we're gonna put mayonnaise, green onion, uh, Old Bay, a little bit of pepper, spice, whatever. And then we got poppers in the little little toaster oven. Throwing in the mayonnaise right now. OSG says a little goes a long way. Mm -hmm. I wish I could remember the exact recipe when we did the walleye, but I was, uh, let's just say a few beers in. <laughs> Salt, pepper, oregano, and I'm going to do Old Bay. Okay. No occasion. All right, all right, all right. But instead of mayonnaise, I'm going to use this garlic everything sauce. Haven't done it before. It's a pretty good call. All right, this is going to require some messy hands, but I just clean my hands. Go nowhere with your hands. Just found a scale. <laughs> pretty, pretty good move getting that out of there. Pop me some panko in there. You want that cheese, buddy? Here you go. All right. Uh, let's go with that. Yes. Nope. Get off of that. Sorry, buddy. Nope. Are you starting something? No, no. <laughs> well, maybe that's good. I need it. I need it going anyway. All right. You guys see the the texture? Chunky. This is chunky. The idea with this method is you're really focusing on the fish. On the other style, I think you can get away like when you're basically semi pureeing the fish. You could probably make gar, and it would taste good. How is it Not buffalo coming? carp, but you could do gar. So out of this, I'm, I'm getting three balls. The idea is like one of these balls can, can feed someone. Yeah, good job, bud. All right, so this is what I came up with. OSG, rolling with the oil, with the yeah. skillets. I'm gonna do a very like light, Pan fry. Oh, what do you got here? You got I'm butter doing, in one? Well, this is for the spinach. I'm doing a, just a light spinach. Oh. 
But I'm doing an olive oil, like cooking high heat olive oil. Okay, I'm gonna dunk mine, I'm gonna douse mine in some you want me to avocado oil. Okay, yep. 100% avocado? Spray me up, spray me up. Yeah, I'll... there we go. Okay. Okay. You wanna flip? Flip them. Okay, but how long is this gonna take to cook? Cause yours are pretty thick. I don't know, this is experiment. Okay, here's mine. I made mine a little smaller. Mine, honestly, the texture kind of reminds me of like cereal. <laughs> but they're smaller, definitely smaller than yours. OSG pulling off for final product. I did, you know, it almost looks like I put like cornflakes in there because the texture is pretty crunchy looking. All right, mine were big, so I'm still, I'm still going. I kind of want to check. Oh man, those look amazing. They actually look really good. Those look like, you know what those look like? Um, like huge cauliflower. Yeah, I might have, okay. That looks awesome. Two more minutes. We're gonna roll with that. Looks good. OSGs look pretty good too. She gets a nice, got a nice browning on them. Simmer, let them rest just in the hot little hot pocket there. I think we did something. I think, I think we did something today. It's hot. Yeah, it's hot. I saw a lot of you guys really liked the cakes that we made previously. Tried the recipe. You liked it. So if this one's good. Definitely want to give this one a shot. But I'm telling you, when I was up in Canada, we tried this with walleye. It was fantastic. Can't beat a walleye, but they were deep fried. So air fryer, totally different, but let's see what OSG's is all about. Very flaky. Oh, you did good. On, I mean, it's cooked well. Is it? It's cooked well for sure. Inside? Is yep. that cooked? Um, it looks still a little, oh no, it feels, it feels cooked. It feels cooked? Yeah, it doesn't feel like rubbery or anything okay. like that. Oh, great taste. Great taste? Mm -hmm. Cause I used a rosemary. What do you, how powder. do you feel about the texture? Bad. Texture's a big deal. I, don't, I can't really complain because this is all I can eat. <laughs> I think you did good. I think. Those are really good. The crackers are not the best, yeah. but the fish is fantastic. I think. You seasoned it perfectly. I think I would use the food processor for a gluten free cracker. I like the big chunks. And look who's ready. Coming out of the warmer. Coming out of the bullpen. Wow, bam. Wow. Come on now. Come on now. I mean, just on aesthetics. You know what it looks like? It looks like a toasted coconut like macaroon. It looks like a giant uh, coconut shrimp. <laughs> yeah, it does. Giant coconut shrimp. Okay. I think That's that was for you. that was actually 13 minutes in the air fryer at 400. How are we doing on the inside? Ooh, Ooh. gosh, it looks good. It does look like a coconut shrimp. Ooh, <laughs> it looks cooked perfectly, quite honestly. So this is the mix of Ritz crackers and panko, white bass and crappie in there. Oh, hang on a minute. Jam? This might be the jam. These green onions in here, oh, mixed in. I'm digging the whole the whole shebang here. Wow. Yours, I will say, I'm very wow. impressed. <laughs> I really want to try some of yours. Try mine. I'm not going to. <laughs> try it. No, it has gluten. Just a little bit. Just a nibble. All right, this is OSG's. Now with the gluten free, you're gonna get a little sandier, crustier. She cooked them perfectly. I would just, I would take off points for that gluten free, probably. <laughs> I don't know how to help that though. It just doesn't cook up as well. It doesn't. It just doesn't. I mean, yours puffed up. I love. I know. I love how yours puffed. Mine was just flat. And I will say, I, I love your gluten free desserts. Like I prefer it actually mm. on brownies, cookies. Muffins. Um, muffins, they're fantastic, they're incredible. But on this right here, no gluten allowed. <laughs> wow. I think I put a little too much panko in here. Mm -hmm. Probably should have stopped at the, after the first dunk. Some people like a lot of bread. 
I want to focus on the fish mostly. That it chunky is. Like size it. is good. Um, you're actually you're seeing the fish when it breaks apart. You get that nice classic break into a you know pure white flaky fish look to it and texture. This is the deal. I would I prefer the cubed over the blended for sure. And I do taste the richness of that rich cracker in mine too. So good. Oh man. Well, fish and freaks, that was one of the best cakes I've ever had. Now, compared to the walleye, it's not gonna be as, as, as good as the walleye. The walleye is the best, it's the best. All right, it's the best thing in North America as far as fresh water goes, but the crappie's a close second and mixing a couple white bass in there certainly didn't hurt things. So the, the diced method I think is way better than doing the blended method. So you guys play around with this, you know, mix, mess around with different spices, uh, different mixtures of panko, crackers, whatever you prefer. I'll continue to dial this in. I will say that the uh, either the panko or the breadcrumbs kind of expanded in the air fryer. So what I thought was not enough breading at first, it ended up being a lot uh, after it cooked up. So just keep that in mind. And I'll say this as well, I love fishing for crappie. It's fun when they, they get a little tough and then you figure them out exactly what they want and catch them, but just eating them is incredible. And as far as sustenance fishing goes, it's rewarding. It's really rewarding. When you put those delicious fish on a plate and you're eating them with your family, it just, it just feels really good. It's very fulfilling. So. I recommend trying it if you don't already fish for crappie or white bass or whatever. You guys can pick up some of the baits, googasquad.com, use my promo code, save 10% on all the baits as well. And the new gear, uh, we got some new gear for the July type stuff, uh, summer type stuff that'll keep you cool out there. So keep that in mind when you're shopping at Google Squad, use my code LFG. And thank you guys for tuning in to another outdoor adventure and I'll see you on the next one.